What memories of Angel did Favorite possess after he took his soul? Could he mimic his personality at will? Or was he unaware of Harry's memories until after he was injured? We examine these questions with clues from the film. They will come with alternative theories. That means what is mentioned within may cause anxiety, rage, and disbelief. But that's why you're here, I hope. Kindly consider leaving a like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this content. It's as easy as a steering contest with a mirror. The boy was bound naked on a rubber mat. There were complicated incantations and stuff in Latin and Greek. A pentacle was branded on his chest. Margaret handed Johnny a virgin dagger, and he sliced the boy clean open and ate his heart. He cut it out so quickly it was still beating when he woofed it down. Maybe he had gained possession of the guy's soul. He still looked like Johnny to me. After the sacrifice on New Year's Eve, Favorite started dumping on people close to him, including breaking off his engagement with Margaret. However, the army drafted him into the Entertainment Corps. Therefore, it's safe to assume Johnny Favorite was still acting like Johnny Favorite. After the attack in North Africa, there were rumors that he was killed when in fact he was suffering from amnesia. While Favorite was as big as Sinatra, memories of him faded quickly when he disappeared from the public spotlight. After dropped off and left to roam alone in Times Square on the following New Year's Eve, the body of Johnny Favorite began to become cognizant of the memories of Harry Angel. For 12 years, Johnny lived under another man's identity. It's not definitive that Favorite had conscious memories of Angel's life after taking his soul. The idea was never entertained that he walked out of his hotel with all the life knowledge of Angel, like something from the Matrix. But it can't be completely discounted. According to Ethan Kruzmark, Favorite's plan before he was drafted was to drop out and resurface as the soldier, taking his identity. What would be better than taking his memories? This plan was so ingrained that it stuck, running on autopilot, after Favorite recovered with supernatural implanted memories, living a false, counterfeit life. Total recall, anyone? The next question, if one absorbs someone else's experiences, will he adopt a new personality? Did the morals of Harry Angel convince Favorite to renounce his life, his friends, did he go mental on everyone? These alternative theories had never been fully explored other than one about Harry hating chickens, but let's explore them anyway. Sometimes it's easier to decipher motivations after a single viewing than multiple. Favorite dumping on everyone can easily be explained. He was never a good person. He needed to distance himself from everyone if he wanted to live the life of a simple soldier boy named Harry Angel. Let's remember, his ultimate goal was to reunite with Evangeline Proudfoot. The film is extremely faithful to the book by William Yortsberg, sometimes to a fault. In the film, we infer that Margaret was heartbroken and she wanted to go through with the marriage. Never mind how that would interfere with Johnny Favorite's plan living under a new name, however. Who knows, maybe Margaret was willing to be Mrs. Angel. It's a two-hour movie, after all, and not a soap opera. But how Margaret would not expect the engagement to be called off to a public figure who would disappear. In the book, Margaret confesses that the breakup was a publicity stunt. She knew about Johnny's relationship with Evangeline and didn't mind too much. Not to digress, this feeds into my theories about who was the lady in black cleaning up Favorite's hotel room that night. Back to Favorite being mean to people. It makes sense on first viewing that Favorite had reason to distance himself from everyone. He just cheated the devil and wanted to go into hiding. He was a selfish man and most everyone despised him, including Spider Simpson. But watch the film again and see how mean he was. He broke up with Margaret, that's one. I suppose by association, Ethan Cruzmark wasn't too thrilled with him, so that counts. That's the end of his mean-spiritedness. Favorite made a record of one of Tut's sweet songs once, but that didn't make them friends. The point I'm trying to make, the script was very terse, efficient, describing what a bad person Johnny was, 
before we are told he murdered someone. The book in an earlier draft of the script goes into detail what a nut favorite was. The theatrical release of Angel Heart, Alan Parker's direction, shrouded favorite in mystery as well as his whereabouts. Now let's talk about chickens. This is insight directly into Harry Angel. As my good friend from Hammered Out said, Harry fears chickens because he fears being a victim. People tend to hate what they fear becoming, and also there is a metatextual explanation. He's the archetypical main character, the tough PI who constantly outwits or outfights his enemies, not a nameless nobody who gets sacrificed for plot convenience. By going to hell, he is the ultimate victim in the end, and his aversion of the birds was as silly as it seemed. His fear of chickens is a statement of, it can't happen to me, and it does. This is Harry Angel's fear, not Johnny Favorite's. Favorite made a hobby spatch cocking pigeons, his way of fortune telling. Not only a clue of two different personalities, but a misleading one. That Harry Angel had nothing in common with Favorite, nothing at all. For 12 years you've been living on borrowed time and another man's memories. Cypher made it clear. Johnny had lived a life with Harry's memories, even when he didn't realize he was Johnny's favorite. By stealing memories, extracting it from his victim, the supernatural incantation worked. Angel's memories, past experiences, were echoes, otherwise proof of favorite taking his soul. While we can discuss if a single lucid mind can manage two memories, what we see in Angel Heart is one body, two personalities, mostly. Through the eyes of Harry Angel, do we see the story play out until the flashbacks. These are Favorite's memories bleeding through. When he has his daydreams, daymares, and the final flashbacks of him committing the atrocious acts, Harry was unaware this had ever happened. When the fans change directions, it is a clue that something evil will come. That the Favorite personality will take over the body. Meanwhile, the Angel personality is oblivious. We don't really see Favorite in Angel's clothing, although I will point out a few moments where it may have. There are clues early that Favorite's memories were surfacing. Harry whistles one of Favorite's tunes. He does this on his way to the clinic and again in Father's home. He's playing a few keys on Margaret's piano. Perhaps there was one moment they both coexisted when staring into the mirror after an inappropriate get-together in the hotel room. While Harry Angel's personality runs around in Johnny Favorite's body, it concludes with Johnny Favorite's personality and memories coexisting with Harry Angel's. Favorite's memories have come back when he last stared into the mirror. With the knowledge of two lives, it brings him no profit. So yes, Johnny Favorite can possess two souls and the memories of each at one time. He only had to empty his own mind first. Frankly, you were doomed from the moment you slit that young boy in half, Johnny. If he was doomed the moment he used the blade, that would mean his scheme failed, even though his ceremony worked, right? Did Favorite null and void his contract? Was there a clause that immediately called for payment? Johnny Favorite was a great crooner and a cultist. He made a terrible lawyer. Big thanks to viewer Jim for his questions and inspiring me to make this video. This is Mr. Giasenji saying, Prevent identity theft. It could ruin your life. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.